Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It is Sakaflos here, and today we are going to be continuing our playthrough of Rune King. So, as usual, if you guys are going to enjoy it, consider liking this video as well as subscribing. I really do appreciate your support here, but most importantly, it's so that you don't miss future episodes or uploads of single player playthroughs or content just like this one. And with that being said, let's get this episode started. So, uh, first things first, I have to apologize for the late upload. I usually upload daily, but uh, I missed the day. I've been missing a couple of days lately. That's because um, I'm trying to get this particular segment done right because uh you know this has tie-ins to the series of course we are trying to go ahead and grab the uh, components as well as the items that is required to craft the legendary weapons for each champion so um, with that in mind i had to make sure i get everything correct because to be fair to be honest we entirely frank with you um this entire segment is actually quite challenging i don't want to say insanely tough or difficult that'd be over exaggerating um quite challenging is the correct term here you'll see why in a second because um today's entire episode revolves around a fairly challenging boss battle which I am gonna go ahead and talk about later but for now first uh, let's go ahead and focus on what I want to do here so um, if you recall in the last episode where we ended things we were actually in the Shadow Isles um, I think south of the ruinous rot woods near the grate where we could potentially ghost water dive and enter the stone lake repository so we are miles away from where you know uh, from that area right now and we're actually back in bilge water here in the low tide market now why the hell are we here that is because um, you also recall if you are coming from the previous episode um, towards the end I talk a little bit about the fact that the Dustblade or Dragdar quest over here um, actually check marks the Serrated Dirk when we retrieved it but it did not check mark the Coldfuse Warhammer when we bought it from the vendor here in Low Tide Market so um, I actually went ahead and did a little bit of digging a little bit of research I again like I said I just want to make sure I get everything right for you guys who are potentially watching this uh, because you know I'm, I'm taking it upon myself to make a guide so it's my responsibility to make sure that you know whatever I present is uh, reliable and uh, factual so um basically what we need to do here is uh, what i've checked is there's supposed to supposedly a cutscene that is supposed to play when you leave the low tide market after purchasing the Goldfields Warhammer. So basically what happened in the previous episode, I'm uh, sorry, not the previous episode, but at the, uh, yeah, the previous episode, right. Um, in the previous episode when we purchased the Goldfields Warhammer, the cutscene did not play for some reason. I am not really sure why. I am just going to say it's a game bug because to be honest, I'm not really sure why the cutscene did not play. And uh, thank God the solution is very, very simple. All you have to do is you just have to walk towards, um, you know, just past this particular point here. Uh, just uh, remember this threshold where my cursor is marking it. Um, and just basically walk back out and the cutscene should play wait did we just buy a hammer do we have any use for a hammer the collector said it's creator could channel magic using it it does not seem to respond to my win maybe Ori could try this belongs to me now a hammer for you aren't you more of a blade guy you'd talk less with a harpoon in your neck captain <laughs> <laughs> okay, a little bit of banter between the team there. And as you can see, finally, the Corvius Warhammer objective is checked. So again, I'm not really sure why this occurs, but I think it's a bug. Um, it could be just an exclusive bug for low-end systems like myself. And if you say you're playing on a low-end system and you're encountering this particular problem, all you have to do is uh, just make a save in this uh, low-tide market and then reload the save, head into this area and head back out. So in theory, it should uh, trigger the cutscene. So hopefully that wor you know that works. Um, but yeah, that's basically what I did. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, head back out because the next objective that we need to do today, the main um, objective for today's episode is to source the bottomless um, shadow power here from the depths and in order to do so we actually need to head out into the open ocean so this actually ties into a particular bounty on the bounty board in fact before we head out to the open ocean i'm just gonna quickly run over to the bounty board and show you which um, bounty this involves so um it's a fairly challenging battle this one um to be i'll, I'll be frank with you i have actually gave this a try off camera uh, which is why i did you know which is why this episode came out very very late um, I actually tried this battle about 20 times and uh, out of 20 times 10 of the times I've actually died because the team composition was kind of off um, out of the 10 times the, the other the remaining 10 times I've only succeeded twice so basically um, you should have a 1 in 5 chance of winning this battle which is uh, <laughs> I think to be fair still kind of good uh, maybe a better player would uh, you know would need less attempts or hell it might, he might not even need a couple of attempts might be even on the first try but for me um, 1 out of 5 it's still a reliable method so um, yeah I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you and i will talk about it after uh, we beat the battle provided we success we successfully beat the guy so if we go into the bounty board here 
the command that we have to face is actually the hall breaker and uh, yeah he, he says here it's level 27 but uh, when you go ahead and actually face him i believe he is actually on a higher level but yeah we have to take on the hall breaker and killing him will grant us the star metal amulet when we come back to collect it but we're mainly doing this so that we could get um the what is it the bottomless source of shadow power from the depths when we kill him so um in order to do so all we have to do is we have to head down to the uh what is it the charming lady dock here where you know which is of course the ship um and what we have to do is we just have to head to the charming lady and select the uh hunting grounds location and then we should be on our way so let's go ahead and do that Okay, so here we are. We are taking on the Hall Breaker. And as you can see, like I said, it has increased in level, level 29. So the bounty board description was a bit um, off. And oh, I forgot to mention this. I probably should have mentioned this before I done so. Um, but it's okay. I'll talk about it now. Let me just go ahead and quickly go to the pause menu first for a second. Um, before you take on this guy, make sure you make a save before you actually, you know, engage the battle. When you know, when you fast travel to the ocean, because um, whenever you fast travel to that particular area, it's gonna immediately lead through you into the battle you're not going to be able to save the game and if you don't save beforehand um, it could be a little bit troubling because um, you cannot revert to a earlier save i know the auto save exists and you could potentially just revert to the auto save before you engage this battle but i highly still you know i still highly recommend making a safe state before actually fast traveling to this place just in case you know you are on a lower level and you're having some difficulty or you have the wrong team selected you could just reload um, that earlier save so again like i said auto save is there i just recommend making a safe state just in case um, you're like me and you're a little bit forgetful and you're not very good um, with the um, you know we, we, you know you, you get confused by the amount of saves that you have so just in case as an insurance policy remember make a save before you fast travel to this location okay so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take on the hole breaker let me just go ahead and inspect what he does so that you guys could have a clearer picture before actually engaging in the battle yourself um, chromatic buildup applies a random chromatic buildup buff to itself chromatic buildups add an additional debuff effect to chromatic blast they are removed when the sea monster is afflicted with its corresponding debuff. Chromatic Smash deals more damage and cleanses you all debuffs. Chromatic Blast deals heavy damage, applies debuffs based on active buildup buffs, has a 10% increased crit chance for each buildup buff applied. Chromatic Buildup applies a random chromatic buildup buff to itself each turn, adding an additional debuff effect to Chromatic Blast. They are removed when the sea monster is afflicted with its corresponding debuff. It is also immune to stuns and it has increased haste by about 30%. Okay, so one thing to note, um, if you're facing this battle, one major thing to note is that the Chromatic Blast actually is um, kind of finicky. Sometimes it does a little bit more damage than it's supposed to, I feel. Um, I could be wrong here, I'm not going to say I'm right, I could be wrong. But I feel like it does a little bit more damage than it's supposed to sometimes, but um, we'll just have to deal with it. Okay, so level 29, so let's go ahead and just, um, uh, let's just go ahead and work, uh, work with him. We open here with Alawi. Um, there's a reason why I went with Alawi, Ari, and Pike. That is because the debuffs um, that Ari and Pike actually can apply with their instant abilities actually come in real, you know, come in really, really handy here. I'm gonna talk more about it after we beat the guy, presuming we beat the guy, <laughs> and then uh, yeah, you guys could see for yourself. So uh, let's go ahead and do a tentacle barrier here with Alawi first. Sorry, not tentacle barrier. We're gonna do a ton. That way she's taking damage. This is important. Make sure you bring a tank for this battle. Um, I recommend Alawi because she can heal. Ari is also just a ad additional healing character. Okay, we are gonna do a tentacle barrier here just to make sure that uh, she doesn't take damage, any incoming damage. It's gonna reduce a little bit, it's not gonna mitigate it entirely neglected entirely with pike here we are in stealth um it's always very good to take advantage of pike stealth mode i i also recommend so since he is in stealth and he has an increased crit chance because of his runes i'll talk about that in you know after the battle uh i recommend doing a carve and just you know getting some debuffs on that would be very very good as well all right we get an extra turn courtesy of the ability as well again i'll talk about that after the battle so let's go ahead and do another carve Bit 
of a shame we don't get another extra turn there, but it's okay. Let's do a double dating orb here with Ori. So if it does the smashably, the um, chromatic smash, you should be really, really safe. Um, because it doesn't do too much damage and Allowi can easily tank that. You're gonna be very, very concerned if he, you know, um, constantly does chromatic blast. Um, it's not gonna, I'm not gonna say it's insanely difficult to beat him if he does a lot of chromatic blast. It's just gonna be very, very challenging. So, um, if he keeps doing chromatic blast and it looks like a very, very, you know, a very bleak battle, I recommend just uh, loading, a pre loading up an earlier save and restarting the battle. It would be much easier for you. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna do another tentacle barrier here with Alawi just to um, prevent any more incoming damage. Alright, with Pike here, let's do another Carve. We're not gonna conserve mana for this one as well, I should add. It is a fairly tough battle, so I don't see us winning it um, by conserving mana. We're gonna try to go aggressive when we can and if we can. We're not just gonna go, you know, brute force aggressive. That would be uh, unwise in my opinion. Okay, so it has the, I believe, the two build-ups here. It has the Magic Sunder as well as the Teal build-up. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a double taking Orb. It should, in theory, apply Magic Sunder and remove the Magic Sunder build-up. And uh, the build dating Orb has, I've also spec the build dating Orb to have a um, Dispel. So in theory, uh, hopefully I got this one right because it's a bit finicky here. If I'm not mistaken, it should dispel the slow and at the same time with the Magic Sunder, it should dispel the Magic Sunder in the process. So hopefully I'm right, we're going to give it a shot. Alright, I am correct, which is good. Okay, this is what I'm saying. Chromatic Blast actually does a shit ton of damage if you're not careful. Alright, what I'm going to do this turn is I'm actually going to go ahead and do a heal on Alawi. We're going to do a Grace of Nagaka Boros. We are going to do power. And uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to heal up Alawi. Alright, with Pike, let's take advantage of the um, next turn in the, uh, what is it, in the in stealth, which, uh, you know, which grants us increased critical. We are going to do a To The Depths. I understand this might not be the greatest. Uh, actually, no, let's not do it To The Depths first. This might be actually better. Let's go ahead and do a Mark Target. That way, we could apply Sunder and Magic Sunder, and we could actually have him take more damage from the ultimate. That would actually be a better, um, wiser thing to do. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright, with Ari here, I am actually going to go ahead and do a... No. Um, no, we're not going to do a Spirit Man. Uh, let's go ahead and do more damage. Let's go ahead and do another Double Tame War. I mainly want to get some debuffs on him because the debuffs will actually help out here because they do a lot of true damage. So, you know, true damage is uh, basically raw damage and it's going to help out a lot. Okay, we have already applied the Sunder and the Magic Sunder on the guy. It has two stacks of Magic Sunder now. Um, one by 10%, one by 18%, which is very, very good. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do Pike's Ultimate, and he should take a shit ton of damage. So actually, no, he's out of stealth. Um, okay, let's try this again. Let's do a Ghost Water Dive. It should give Pike stealth and get an increased crit chance, and that should essentially give us more damage on the uh, Ultimate. So yeah, that's definitely better. Okay, Pike is in stealth, which is good. And now we're going to do it to the depths. played that one a little bit better now that I think about it. Um, I'll tell you why in a second.
Yeah, I definitely could have played that one a little bit better. Um, that was because, if you recall, there was a moment when uh, we actually did the. If we went with allow uh, with Ori Spirit Man, we actually went before the Hole Breaker. So, what we could have done was we could have actually healed up Alawi, and game. we could have had Alawi did a tentacle barrier, and that way it would have taken reduced damage. But um, it's okay. I think what we'll do here is uh, because we still need Alawi to tank damage for us, we are gonna do a Spirit Man on Alawi here. Ari's heal plus Alawi Spirit Men, uh, plus the Spirit Men should essentially bring Alawi back up to full health. I know it's not the greatest because it might, you know, be a little bit of overheal there. But um, again, because this is a tough battle, we need someone tanking damage. It is important, it is imperative, it is vital that Alawi stays in the battle. So let's go ahead and do a Spirit Men on her. Okay, so again, we have a good chance here with Pike. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a Mark Target here. Um, that is because if we could get more Sando on him, we could actually get the... Uh, what is it? Um, what, what, what is it? We could actually get the an another first ultimate and we could use it on the Hallbreaker. So yeah, let's try that. Okay, um, let's do a Ghost Water Dive since he is out of stealth and this should give us a another chance for an ultimate. Alright, so Ari's turn will, poss will possibly heal up Alawi and in that sense it might be better to do a Tentacle Barrier here. Um, actually just to double check, the he Hallbreaker is casting the Chromatic Smash on Alawi. So what we can do is we can just do a Tentacle Barrier here and actually... Um, no, let's not do that first, because the taunt is gone, and the next the refresh has the Hullbreaker before Alawi. In that sense, we're going to do a taunt again. It will also have a 25% chance to summon a tentacle um, when hit, which is actually kind of good, because we could potentially have the tentacle barrier active with the more damage reduction, so that's going to be good. Okay, let's do a taunt. Here, let's do Tentacle Barrier. Okay, so Pike is in stealth and he has the chance for an ultimate here. We are gonna go for it to the depths. As you can see, Alawi is back to full, which is precisely what we want. Let's hope this turn isn't too heavy. If it's not, we should be okay. Alright, so what we're going to do here is... Uh, let me just see what he's casting in. He is casting Chromatic Blast. It is in the Balance Lane, which is also kind of scary. Um, I'm going to do another Tentacle Barrier here just to see if we can block some of that damage. He... the... what is it? The Hall Breaker, I believe, has a Slow and an Ignite um, buff, right? I think Ari's Debilitating Orb should do the trick here. It should uh, dispel both of them because it has a dispel and it also it guarantees Ignites the target. So it should dispel both of the debuffs. Okay, cool. That is exactly what I want. Okay, we are going to do the same thing with Pike. I know it looks like we are wasting a lot of mana on him, but trust me, the... What is it? Um, What's that ability called again? The To The Depths is actually a very, very useful ability here. So I'm going to try to farm it very, very often. You Let's do a... Do Let's do another Mark Target. We are going to do a Ghost Water Dive just to guarantee stealth. Sure. 
And again to the depths. Taunt is still active. Let's go ahead and do a tentacle barrier again. All right, with Ari here, we are gonna do. I think. Let's see what we do. Let's see what we do. Mm, devour. No. Spirit men. Let's go ahead and do a double thing orb again. Pike, we're gonna do another carf. We're just trying to whittle him down to a manageable, manageable health, and that way, you know, we could potentially wipe him out. That is basically the plan here. for another tentacle smash which is uh, sorry not tentacle smash another chromatic smash which is AFK in my book um, allow his taunt is gone so we're gonna go ahead and continue that we are, are gonna taunt again trying? and we are also gonna do a defend Alright, so Ari's turn. Again, another double thing orb just to dispel the buff and at the same time get some useful debuffs on it. So again, it is targeting Alawi Chromatic Blast. It is in the attack zone, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, but yeah, I think it should be okay. Because what we're going to do here with Pike is we're actually going to go ahead and do another mark target. Um, that way we get the Sunder and Magic Sunder on him. And then we should be able to do a ultimate and then, you know, get more damage off. That could be good. Okay, let's go and do that. Nice. Alright, so let's go ahead and do it to the depths. Makes me smile. I think it's pretty clear uh, what my strategy is here. I'll tell you when I'm done, uh, when, you know, when this turn is over. Okay, so you'll notice that we have a debuff on Alawi, which is fine. That is because, um, if I'm not mistaken, the tentacle barrier should cleanse Alawi, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do that. We, hopefully, we should be able to heal up. That is a bit of my concern. Um, four. Four Essence Thief. Okay, hold on. Let me think about this for a second. <laughs> okay, four Essence Thief. Ari's turn is coming up. Okay, let's do a tentacle berry. You're just a little distraction. Hold on, it's supposed to cleanse it, right? Or or don't tell me it was the taunt supposed to cleanse it and I mixed up my abilities. Um <laughs> Yeah, you know what? It's okay, it's okay. We should be still we should still be fine. Uh we can potentially cleanse Alawi later. Um let's do a the build building orb again here. Stay still. Uh, 
and what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna do a carf with pike. Just whittling down to a manageable health. Okay, I think this is what I'll do this turn because I definitely need Alawi to survive here. I am gonna use a cleansing potion. Um, I think we should have a cleansing potion somewhere, right? Minor cleansing potion. There we go. Okay, we're gonna use it on Alawi because the bleed actually gives us a lot of damage um, coming off what we saw in the earlier turn. Um, but it's okay. We should be fine. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna do another grace here, and we should get some good amount of heal on Alawi. And with Pike here, we are going to do another... Um, what target goes for the dive? We're a bit low on mana as well. Okay, it's okay. We are going to do... I'm going to do a Phantom Undertow for the first time. Because if I'm... In, in theory, that shit cleanse the debuffs and at the same time get us some good damage. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot because, you know, essentially, this is a tough battle. So we're not going to, you know, take any... Um, you know, we're not gonna take we're not gonna take it easy. We're gonna try to play aggressive. If we lose mana, go ahead. It doesn't matter. Uh, let's go ahead and do a Phantom Undertow. This is where it gets a bit concerning, I don't like. This is also where, you know, um you in the first you know five in out of ten times, this is actually uh, in a, a, a situation like this is where I would usually die, but um, we should be okay, hopefully. Okay, so as you can see, the Phantom Undertow has a dispel there, which was good because it removed the Ignite thingy. The next thing we need to do is we need to remove the Slow. So in order to do so, I am going to do a Double Dating Orb, and that in theory should remove the uh what is it the the this the slow thing here and at the same time apply some good debuffs okay allow he's dead all right it's all right that is because we have pre-planned this and this is actually to our advantage we'll see why in a second It is fine, trust me, you'll see why in a second. That is because what we can do here is what I'm gonna do with Pike is I'm gonna do another Mark Target. Um, get this Thunder on the guy. While with Ari, we are actually gonna do a Spirit Man. We are gonna do speed as well. Um, hold on, who is he targeting? He's actually targeting Ari here. Okay, on second thought. Uh, with Ori, let's do Arcane Ward first. Alawi can wait. That's because there is a plan to revive Alawi and I will show you in a second. But first, let's do Arcane Ward just to make sure Ori doesn't take too much damage. She should be fine. Hopefully, she's fine. <laughs> okay, we, we're okay. We're okay. We are fine. Don't worry about it. I got Pike here. Let's go ahead and do a death from below. Um, I'm not sure if this is below 30% health. This should be roughly around 30% health, I would say. Uh, not, I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna do mathematics in my brain right now, but um, it should be around 30%. So in theory, that should give us some good damage, and we have executioner as well as increased crit chance. Um, I think it should be very, very good damage here. Let's go ahead and do a death from below. It's fine. I have a plan. You'll see it in a second. So, since, um, you know, we have a turn with Ari here, what we're going to do is we are going to do a Spirit Man. 
We are gonna do speed. This is key, speed. That is because I have spec'd out the spirit man to revive an ally on, uh, you know, revive a KO'd ally to 60% health with the speed spirit man. So we're gonna do this and we are gonna revive Alawi. All right, for Pike, what we're gonna do is um, he looks like he might go down, but um, just in case, uh, you know, uh, if, if he does go down, we're gonna do a carve and we should be able to uh, weaken him a little bit more. Weaken the Allbreaker. Okay, I want to see what he does here first. He targets Ari, which is exactly what um, you know what I what 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 we do not want. But we could actually counteract this because we're gonna do a taunt here. We're gonna make sure it targets uh, Alawi instead. Now, I know for a fact that the what is it? The chromatic blast is gonna do some massive damage. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and do a test of spirit here. Uh, because the Tesla Spirit will actually give us some um, heals um, when the, uh, you know, it, it marks the target with some heals essentially. And at the same time, um, it will also dispel some buffs. So we're going to go ahead and do that. The truth revealed in time. All right, for Pike, what we're going to do is we are a little bit out of the... Oh, we don't have enough overcharge. We don't have enough overcharge. <laughs> it's okay. I tell you what, let's just go ahead and do a Carve here. It should be fine. Oh, nice. We actually get an extra turn, which is very, very good. Okay, um, let's go ahead and do a mark target. We make sure we go after Alawi. That way, Alawi can apply a test to spirit first. Nice. And we get into stealth as well. We get Sunder and Magic Sunder, which is cool. Okay, so here we're going to do an ultimate with Pike to the depths. This should give us some very, very good damage. Hopefully, I don't think it's going to kill him, but it should be some very, very good damage nonetheless. As you can see, we've dropped him really, really low. Uh, what we can do is we can continue to hit him where it hurts. We are going to do a double dating orb. It should give us some good debuffs. And at the same time, um, it should uh, potentially, I think, apply a... What is it? Um, uh, right, debuffs only. Sorry, I'm thinking about the dispel, but we have nothing to dispel here, obviously. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do a double dating orb. Or actually, no. This might be better because um, I'm going to anticipate that he will kill Alawi here with a Chromatic Blast. It might be better if we revive Alawi immediately after she dies. So let's go ahead and do a Spirit Man. Okay, it is targeting Alawi again. So I'm gonna assume Alawi's gonna die. Let's do another Test of Spirit. Oh, actually, no, let's not do that. Let's do a. Harsh Lesson here because we could actually get the kill. Okay, let's go ahead and do a Harsh Lesson. And we will do Pikes to the Depths here. That should give us some very, very good damage. What do you know? We didn't even need Alawi's Harsh Lesson, <laughs> which is amazing. Alright, cool. So this is what we are at. 3, um, 32, 44 gold and 1872 XP. We get something called a Jolly Roger as well, which is kind of cool. I believe this is a shield for Braum. 
312 XP. Everyone levels up here. Perfect. Level 29. We're not going to check this out. We're just going to quickly speed through this. This creature has touched the depths and it brought something back. Brought something back from the depths. A soul from below. The soul of a killer. Braum does not like the sound of that. This darkness is unsettling. Unsettling, but powerful. Okay, so we are back and we have finally killed the Hallbreaker there. Um, we should have completed the bounty and at the same time we acquired the... Uh, what was it? I cannot remember what we acquired from him. Um, Soul of the Deep, I think. Something something about Shadow Power. I'm not really sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that is done. So, I know I said I was supposed to show you the uh, rune page as well as the equipment abilities and stuff. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. We're about like 45 minutes in or so. Um, 45 minutes or, you know, 30-something minutes. Okay, regardless, we are really, really out of time and there isn't enough time to do that. Uh, however, what I'm going to do instead is I think this is much better as well. I don't think you want to hear me ramble. It might be better if I just put it in the PDF file, which I have linked in the description down below. That PDF file is basically a simplified, watered-down guide of how you're going to be able to get the legendary weapons as well as the level 3 ultimate. So, I'm going to put screenshots of that uh, particular um you know of of the uh, what is it of the rune page as well as the equipment and the abilities that i have uh, that i use for that particular battle against the hallbreaker and i'm gonna put it in that pdf file for you guys to check there's another alternative as well i'm gonna upload it on um imgur imgur not really sure what you pronounce that um i m g u r um i don't want to sound like a fool here but yeah we are i'm gonna upload it on that website and you guys could potentially just check it out yourself or again alternatively um it should be in the pdf file for you guys uh, you know for your convenience so with that being said uh, we're gonna end the video here because we are running out of time so hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode and hopefully you found this um, particular episode of defeating the hallbreaker helpful and if you found it helpful and enjoyable can consider leaving a like as well as hitting that big red sub button down below i really do appreciate your support here but most importantly it's so that you don't miss future episodes or uploads of single player playthroughs or content just like this one and with that being said this is capital signing off thank you all so much for watching thank you all for tuning in thank you all for joining me as well hopefully i catch you all in the next one goodbye